we got brand new trucks in BMG Drive, and we're gonna crash them flying through the air. If it works out, will it? Find out in this video. Hey, this is YBR with BMG Drive, and today we're gonna be taking a look at the Alpha version 0.21 update. And with this update, when you click career mode, nothing happens still. Someday we'll get career mode, but that day is not today. So instead, we're going to go to Jungle Rock Island, which has been revamped quite a bit for this update. And before we actually drive around the map, how about a quick overview of the changes? First off, most of the buildings have been reworked, and when the buildings are reworked, the roads around them also change a lot of the time, as you see here. A lot of areas that were kind of barren and blank now have a lot more details in them. Before, this was a basic mud pit. Now, it's a mud pit with trees and buildings and stairs and all kinds of good stuff in it. And then beaches have been changed up as well. This one used to have a lot of green on it. Now it's mostly sand. And then there are brand new buildings that you got to find like this half falling apart building over here. And based on the style and the fact that it is half falling apart, you can tell this is a much older building. If I had to guess, I would say it's well over 100 years old and probably a bit more than that even. And of course, there are a lot of other changes as well that I will mention as we see them. Now as for the vehicles, the one that got the biggest update is the D-Series. And the D-Series is really starting to get out of control with the number of variations we got here. There are so many of them that I feel like I need a specific search just to find the truck I want. Thankfully, the first one we're going to be taking a look at is right at the bottom and easy to find. So we're going to start with the D-15 Crawler Crew Cab, which is a pretty beefy off-road vehicle. In fact, it barely shares anything with a regular D-Series. For example, if we look at the frame of the vehicle, you can see it actually has the roll cage incorporated into the frame. Which brings us to the next thing I want to mention. Look at how many frame options are available for the D-Series now. I don't have any mods installed. These are all stock options that you can use to customize the D-Series however you want. Somebody needs to calculate how many different possible D-Series there are because there's nearly infinite, it feels like, when we're designing it. So back to this guy, though. On the suspension, this is quite possibly the biggest, beefiest suspension setup I've seen outside of something like a monster truck. Look at how big the suspension components are back here. And look at how it pushes the rear wheels outward. So the wheels are out the very corner of the vehicle and no body part hangs outside of that. And something else that's really cool about the rear suspension is it has these straps in the back. So what these straps do is they limit the amount of travel that the suspension can have. So if we pull it up here, you see it travels, it travels, and then the straps are at tension. So it won't travel any more than that, so if we keep lifting it, it just raises the whole vehicle. And then watch how gently the vehicle gets dropped down thanks to the suspension. It just goes boop, and it's so soft and gentle the way it lands because it has so much travel in the suspension. On the side, we have some rock sliders, and you can see it's been doing some rock crawling because it got some scratches on it already. And over on the front, we got an equally beefy suspension setup, and the wheels are also way outside of the normal body, it looks like, because it has a trapezoid-shaped hood that I'm assuming is better for off-roading. And one thing I love is if you go down to the underside of the vehicle and you find the front drive shaft, there it is right here. Look at how downward angled the front drive shaft is. And that's actually the drive shaft because you can see it rotates a little bit as we slowly drive the vehicle away. And then I can't see anything. And you see we're a little in the mud, but that doesn't even phase this vehicle. A little mud might as well be a perfectly paved highway. And normally there would never be a really good place to test this guy out on Jungle Rock Island. But with the update, this mud pit over here actually has some decent areas to test out its crawling capabilities. Now, there's nothing extreme here. In fact, this whole area is very easy for the vehicle, but that shows you just how capable it is. Because I just went down those rocks with absolutely no planning whatsoever. I just charged forward, and whatever was in front of me, I assumed we would be fine, and that was definitely the case. You do have to be careful in the water, though, because it does not have a snorkel. Oh, this is good. Here we go. We're going to test the way the suspension travels. Ooh, that looks pretty good. But you know what? I think the rear will look even better. So let's try to get the rear lined up in the same way. How about we use this rock here? Get the rear up. Oh, yeah. Look at that. 
That is impressive. The whole rear half of the vehicle almost looks like it's disconnected from the front because it's tilting so much, but that's exactly what you want it to do if you have a real mean, serious off-road vehicle like this guy. Oh, this is going to be good. Can we go over this rock? Let's see. It actually made it up onto the rock. Okay, I don't know what will happen, though, if we try to go across the rock. To give it the best chance possible, low range and locked differentials. And let's just see what happens here. Can it make it? It actually made it. If I'm being honest with you guys, I thought we would probably get stuck there. And what actually happened? The truck barely broke a sweat. And look at how easily we can just climb back up the hill we descended earlier and go back all the way to where we started if we wanted to, but I don't want to do that because we got other places to explore. Oh, this is unexpected. <laughs> I did not expect to roll over like that, but thankfully it's got a roll cage on it. It can roll around and as long as it lands on its wheels, it'll keep going. Overall, I think we have a new king of crawling vehicles. This is easily better than all of the stock ones, including the crawling version of the hopper. Oh no, one of my tires died. Thankfully, the suspension doesn't really care. It's still just such a great suspension setup. Although it is pulling really hard to the left. And we do have other vehicles to take a look at. And oh man, that tire really is flat. That looks crazy. Anyways, the next version we're going to be taking a look at is going to be the D15 Rock Racer. And the suspension on this vehicle is pretty similar to the one we were just driving, but it's a little less extreme rock crawler. And then, of course, the overall look of the vehicle is completely different. This is just a regular pickup truck where the other one was an off-roading crew cab. And it seems like the purpose of this vehicle is to split the difference between a true rock crawler and a pre-runner. So in a way, it ends up being the ultimate truck that should be able to do nearly anything. This is testing the pre-runner aspect of the truck and going through a bumpy dirt road is an absolute breeze. Although if you slam on the brakes a little bit too hard, it does dip down a lot and it looks like it might tip over. But for my testing, it's fine. It just looks a little bit scary when it slams on the brakes. If you try to do it with the crawler, it might be more than just a little bit scary. We're going to yeehaw it. Yeehaw! Did you see how smoothly it went up the yeehaw? That was beautiful. It looked like a ramp specifically made for the truck. Now we need to try to actually do that properly. Instead of just flying off into the ocean, we're going to climb up the rocks nice and easy like so we can drive on top of the building. So very easy. Oh, look at that. That was easy. I didn't even need to use low gear or lock the differentials. Okay, this, I don't know if it's going to work out because we got to jump. And we gotta go fast to make that jump. But oh no, I just damaged my tail light. It's gone. Fix it. All right, now we're ready to do the jump. Can we do it with the regular setup? Oh, just barely clearing that. We probably would have accelerated a little bit better if we were in low range just because the gearing would have been a little bit shorter, but we didn't need to. Now we need to find our way off of here. We could probably try to climb a wall. The problem is what happens after you go over the wall. You just kind of fall off the cliff, so we don't want to do that. So we're actually going to drive to the place where we came in and drive out from there. Ooh, tight corner. Okay, back it up. We ain't going to wreck my suspension in a dumb way. Just barely clearing it. And we are through. That went excellently. Ooh, did you see that suspension movement? That was nice. And I got a fun idea. Let's climb these stairs. And wow. Those stairs might have been a ramp. It was so ridiculously easy to climb. All right, let's see how these stairs are going to go because we're coming at a really awkward angle, kind of bouncing off the wall a little bit, and come on. This one, I came at a bad angle, and it still made it up. Wow. All right, now we're going to just climb that tree behind us because why not? We can climb everything else, right? Well, not quite in reverse. We're crashing directly into it. We got to try to do like a little 180 maneuver first, which is not the easiest thing to do because we don't have a lot of room to really maneuver around here. Well, that looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and save the spot. And then here we go. Stupidest thing I've tried yet. Let's climb the tree. Uh-oh. Time to lock the differentials and go into low gear. Now it's serious tree crawling time. All right, well, you can kind of crawl the tree. The problem is, is if you look at the tree, you see it's very pointy right here at the start. So there's really no place for me to get my wheels down and actually get traction. I'm just going to bottom out right there because it's just basically a cliff off the edges. 
So it could climb the tree if you had a vehicle that had a wheel right in the middle. Unfortunately, we don't have that. And plus, what do you get when you climb the tree? You just fall into a hole that you can't escape out of. Why would you want that anyways? I don't know. All right, so let's go ahead and do some more pre-runner style driving. That means we're just gonna drive on some dirt roads basically after we get down these stairs so easily. That was magnificent. All right, I gotta admit, churning radius, not the greatest. I had to do a little maneuver there to do a full 180 just to continue along the dirt road. But now that we're on the dirt road, moving at decent speeds, we don't have to worry about doing any tight maneuvers like that anymore because that's not normally what you would expect out of a pre-runner style course, although this really isn't a true pre-runner style course. It's just a dirt road with bumps, but the Rock Racer feels really good through here. This is such a finely tuned vehicle, I basically have no complaints about it whatsoever. Although we should try one dumb thing. What if we cut through the bushes? What will that do? Oh, this is not going to go well, is it? Wow. It actually made it through there. I thought for sure it would somehow get stuck on a bush or something, but it didn't even really get slowed down much at all. Now's a good time to mention, since Jungle Rock was updated, the bushes and the trees do seem to be a little less grabby, or maybe I'm imagining that because that's what I want them to do. And that should do it for just driving through the dirt roads, which means we need something new to do. Thankfully, we got the next test right here. There's a building down there. We're going to try to get to it. So just in case things don't go well going through the bushes, we'll save this spot. And then fingers crossed that we don't get stuck on any bushes. Here we go. Oh, that was good, good, perfect. Oh no. I think the fence is eating my big fat tires. Here, lock the differentials, low gear. Ah, there we go. Well, sort of. It almost made it past the fence. Problem is the fence is just a little too thin. So the vehicle doesn't actually sit on it, it clips right through it, and then we get stuck. So, we'll teleport it over here, and then we're going to take a look at the next configuration, which is the D35 Super Pig. And this is like a combination of the original D-Series Pig, plus the crawler that we were driving earlier. And we're going to see, can it fit through the tiny hole in the wall? Yes it can, but only just barely. And as we slow down, you see how the straps are at max tension it looked like? That gives me a fun idea. What we're going to do is we're going to slam on the brakes right after we clear the jump. And then, yep, <laughs> we can flip the car into its roof super easily if I wanted to do that. Why would you want to do that? I'm sorry to say I don't have the answers to every question there is in life. You got to ask me simpler questions like what is the meaning of life? That's the question I can answer. Anyways, we are now doing some actual crawling over some rocks with this guy, and he's doing a pretty good job, although we are stuck right now, but there's an easy out for that. We just lock the differentials, and we are off, and we didn't even need to use low gear. It was actually a strategic choice because I don't want to put too much power down all at once accidentally and flip it over because this terrain is so bumpy. So let's try to climb up these stairs and get back to where we started with this car. So nice and easy, use the wall for support. That's not support! We just clipped right through the wall. I was planning on just kind of bumping into the wall and using it to climb up because I didn't know if the vehicle would fit. That is not at all what was supposed to happen. And that's going to do it for Jungle Rock Island. There are a lot of other buildings and small changes throughout the whole map that I haven't got to show you. So if you'd be interested in seeing a video that goes over just the changes to Jungle Rock Island, leave a comment so I know. But for now, we're going to head over to West Coast USA. And we're going to test the truck who is right here in the loading screen. Normally I edit out loading screens, but hey, there you are. That's part of the update technically. Now unfortunately, there's nothing new to look at in this specific location, but between Jungle Rock Island and West Coast USA, this is probably the best place to trap the pre-runner version of the truck. So we have two options. We have the regular pre-runner and the extended cab version, which doesn't look right. That looks like a pre-runner. That looks like some sort of strange abomination, which I want no part of. Thank you very much. And just by looking at it, you can tell this is a mighty fine pre-running truck. Do you say a pre-running pre-runner? Because I just did and I just do and now I say pre-running pre-runner. Almost feels like I'm starting to say a tongue twister when I say that. So let's not do it anymore because I will mess it up if I try to say it again. Anyways, going through here, not the perfect area for the pre-runner, but it's decent enough. The corners are a little too tight and you're not going to be going quite fast enough on the jumps, but you still get to hit the jumps and see how does the suspension cope? And the answer is very, very well. We can hit these jumps at whatever speed we want and we don't have to worry about what the suspension is doing because it's going to be fine. 
All we have to worry about doing is making sure we line up in a direction where it's not going to crash into a wall after it lands. Next up is the most pre-runnest jump there is. So that means we're pre-running the pre-runner to the pre-runnest jump. Yep, that totally makes sense to me. And again, it cleared it with such ease. Whoa! It did want to tip over just for a second there because I cut that corner a little too close. I gotta be careful about that. Anyhow, that's a full lap of the course. I think the vehicle did a really good job. But what we need to do is we need to test this thing in a crash test. So you can probably get up to decent speed just driving a straight line through here. Going about 60 miles per hour on impact, maybe even 70. And there we have a nice impact. Who's going to stand up? Uh, not quite. What an awkward landing. Anyways, hey, look at that wheel go. Go wheel, go wheel, go. Whatever he's doing. Anyways, here's a look at the damage that we can see. And then let's look at the damage that we can't see. There we are. Get out of the floor. And there's the damage that we couldn't see. So how about I show you a couple neat tricks you can do with this new update. First off, if you go and spawn up another vehicle and there's a wall right next to you, previously it would just spawn the vehicle into the wall. Now the game is smart enough to say, oh, there's a wall there, so I'm going to put the vehicle right next to the one you have, but it's not going to overlap with it or the wall. It just fits perfectly in that gap. And this, by the way, is the abomination version of the pre-runner. Just does not look right, does it? Mm -mm, I like the single cabs. So we have a quick crash into the wall with it, like so. A little bit of damage, but not much since it is pretty big and strong. But how about we do a fun little crash where we crash in the middle of the jump. So I'll just place this guy right about here. And then for my vehicle, I'm going to be lazy. Instead of driving, because it's a long drive, I'm just going to go ahead and teleport it. And if we take a look at the AI menu, we have a new option called Follow Me, which is very similar to Chase, except they won't crash into you. Unfortunately, I want them to crash into me, so we're going to use Chase. And if I did that dumb thing where I put a random clip at the start of the video, this would be a great one, because I could be like, we got brand new trucks in BMG Drive, and we're going to crash them flying through the air, if it works out. Will it? find out in this video and by the way the answer is yes because that's actually the ideal crash because you can't crash directly into each other in the air there because only one of them ramps upwards the other one ramps downwards so you just fly over the other truck that was exactly the kind of crash i was looking for though where we actually hit each other oh would you look at this i have a little bit of movement still so there's a look at the damage to my truck and then here's a look at the damage to their truck kind of surprising that we both managed to mobilize each other even though we weren't going that fast. But as I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of other changes to West Coast USA that I want to take a look at. So let's go ahead and just go to a completely different area of the map because there's nothing around me that I want to drive to. And we're going to drive something that's sketchy even at speeds of about 15 miles per hour. So it's going to be a D45 variant of the D series. So all the D45s you see are brand new. So we have the ambulance cargo box upfit and the one I'm going to be driving which is the D45 diesel rollback upfit. So this is pretty cool because it has the ability to put a car on the rear and that car will slide all over the place. Although one thing that's kind of funny is the controls on this. They have page down and control page down as the controls. Like they don't want you to slide and raise it at the same time. But you know what I say to that? You can't stop me. I will find an exploit. If you switch between the vehicles like that, you can slide and raise at the exact same time. You can even have it slide and raise at the exact same time while we change vehicles. So on the back of this, I want to put something new and unique. So how about we get the D10 Churro 423 Sport? Yes, it's pronounced churro, just like the food. I know it's not spelled like that, but that's how you pronounce it. And it rolls right on the trailer, nice and easy. So all we gotta do now is raise the trailer up and it should be doing both at the same time. What have I done? I don't think I did things in the right order because it just popped a wheelie a bit. But it looks like it's gonna be okay. We'll make sure it's sliding all the way on. And then we get to drive it like an actual tow truck driver. It does sound fun to mess around with it, which we'll do later on, but right now it's serious driving time. And serious driving time is over. Time for an evasive maneuver to the left. Oh! <laughs> Hold on. That is the very top speed I could have done that. Any more and it would have fallen off. Look at this. The tires are literally half on the trailer. My goodness. Well, since we're still driving, I should mention this road here is brand new with the update. 
and same goes for the tunnel that we'll be entering in a few seconds. And of course I got to turn to the left, which just makes it even more likely to tip over. So I'm doing the smoothest turn to the left that I have ever done in my life. And the best part is the turns to the left do not stop. We just have more to the left and more to the left. Thankfully, they're nice and swoopy, so I just got to make sure my cornering maneuvers are nice and swoopy to match, and we'll be okay. Soon enough, it will straighten out, thankfully. So here is the end of the tunnel. We made it through the most difficult part, and we are safe. All right, we have a corner going to the right. We're going to try to just whip it a bit to get it going a little bit more to the side, and it doesn't care. I tried to whip the D-Series into position, it didn't work, so we gotta really whip. Are you ready for the real style whip? This might flip the whole truck, I don't know, but here we go! Oh, what? Oh, come on! How did that not move an inch? What? Well, if it's gonna be that sturdy, I shouldn't have to worry about it falling off, I guess, then, right? I gotta mention, too, this car does look cool with the stripe, don't it? The 423 stripe. Wait, wait, did it move? It moved the smallest amount because now instead of the wheels hanging off the edge, they're fully on the trailer. You know what? I'll take it. It's better than nothing. That means we can fix this. So what if we kind of go in the dirt a little bit and bounce the truck up into the air to try to get it to the side? Oh, uh, nope. That was a dumb idea. I don't know why I thought that would work. Sometimes a dumb idea enters my head and I execute it before I think about what I'm actually doing. That was one of those situations. And I'm going to try to cheat the truck onto the other truck. So I'm just going to keep teleporting it backwards little by little and see if that does anything. Oh, I tried to freeze physics to stop it in place. That didn't work. All right. So we'll have to do it the manual way where we teleport it onto the back. Oh, that's a little sketchy. It's already hanging off the edge. Let's try to actually have it centered just for a little bit. Because I'm sick and tired of it trying to fall off the trailer and stressing about it. If we just do a little bit of no grabbing like that. It makes everything so much easier. Now, we could do some dumb things. For example, what happens if we slide the trailer back as we drive? Because we can totally do that. And it's working perfectly fine. I'm assuming eventually the front wheels are gonna pick up. Oh yeah, popping a wheelie. I got absolutely no steering because my front wheels are just completely in the air. Oh my goodness. Even braking is kind of bad when your front wheels are in the air. I just barely came to a stop without crashing. So wheelies is quite possibly the stupidest thing you can do with this truck. So you know what? We're going to do some more wheelies. We just got to make sure we're lined up because it's really hard to get it lined up with so much weight behind the rear wheels. But that looks pretty good. So we go tilt mode. And oh yeah, pulling off a big wheelie with no steering at all. But we're going to hit the wall, aren't we? Well, maybe not. I came to a stop because I was scared, but that might not be necessary. And look at the way it just holds itself in the air. That is beautiful. We could just very slowly accelerate. Oh, it's going way to the right now. What did I do? All right, we need to get the wheels on the ground. If we slam on the brakes, the front wheels touch the ground, and we can steer just for a little bit. This is a complete disaster. Okay, this is ridiculous. Let's go ahead and make this thing actually the way it's supposed to be and then we can actually stare a little bit because i have like no control we could do the other thing though we could tip it and we're gonna try to tip it as far as it can possibly go as long as the truck doesn't fall off and it's doing good doing good and that is maxed out so we can drive still probably oh it's still scraping we got the sparks flying Ooh. It'd be really cool if we found a super low underpass where we could just rip the back off of this thing. Unfortunately, 8-foot underpasses are extraordinarily rare and there aren't any around me right now. And here we are entering another tunnel. And you can basically assume any tunnel in West Coast USA is new because prior to this update it didn't have any tunnels. And really, the nicest thing about all the tunnels throughout the map is it makes everything feel more consistent. Because everywhere else it used to be, oh, here's a dead end, we gotta spin around and go a different way. But now, instead of having a dead end, you have a tunnel that connects it to a different piece of the road. So you just keep driving in what feels like a straight line. And it really feels a lot better than just having all those dead ends all over the place. Because the map ends up feeling a lot bigger than it previously was. That's why I'm showing you so much of me just driving around like this. 
because it feels like a completely different experience with the simple addition of all these tunnels. Unfortunately, there still are dead ends around the map that you can hit. Ooh! When you get a little bit sideways, it keeps going sideways because a lot of the weight's on the back where it's just scraping and not in the actual wheels. All right, so now that we're out of the tunnel, it's time for something new. We're gonna try to drive the car on the back, but we're gonna try to drive it off of the thing while it's still driving. So we got a nice little spot like right here where it can go straight for a few seconds on its own. So we're gonna go to the Charo, and then we're gonna go ahead and do the park and brake off, unfreeze physics, and just roll off the back. Beautiful! <laughs> Goodbye, trailer. You did me well, oh no! <laughs> Guys, I just had a car crash with myself. I didn't even know that was possible. Oh, but you know what? That was actually important because the truck was trying to show me, look at the new gas station here. So with this gas station, you can drive around it. Unfortunately, there's still no gas fill up mechanic in the game, although there is, or at least was a mod that added that feature. I don't know if it's compatible with this update. I would have to check that later on. But as you see right now, I'm running with no mods at all. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk about the churro that I'm driving right now. So the engine isn't anything too impressive, even though it's a 423, that's a pretty big engine. It only makes about 270 horsepower and 370 foot-pounds of torque, so it's nothing crazy. This is a perfectly reasonable production vehicle that could have been made around that time as the high-performance option. And as you see, driving it around here, we are up to over 100 miles per hour as we go through the tunnel and we should be able to maintain a lot of speed through here because the curves are nice and smooth for the most part. Oh, we're getting a little sideways. Don't crash into the wall. Hold it. Oh no. Oh, I did not hit the wall. My wheel did hop the curb a little bit, but I did not hit the wall. And even hopping the curb didn't really matter because we're still driving in a perfectly straight line. Churro. You are now my new favorite D series. The only thing left is to do a little crash test. So we just bump the front and bump the rear. How does it hold up? Looks like it's gonna be fine. Although those were very gentle softball bumps that any vehicle should be able to survive. I mostly just like the name cause churros are delicious. And he's named Churro. Just like the pickle is named the pickle and the manufacturer is named Gravel. I will make a mod that changes its name to Churro, and you can't stop me. All right, how about we do a big crash? We gotta pull straight ahead. Let's try to slide into it like so. Oh my, it's on fire. You know, I really do like the way it looks when you have it without the back, but also the second row of seats. I don't know, it just looks cool to me. Well, since he's busy being on fire and all that, why don't we go ahead and get a new truck to drive around? And I should also mention, there is the D15 423 Sport, which is the truck version of the one we were just driving. Right now, I wanna drive the D45 Ambulance. And you notice, it actually changed my spawn location so I wouldn't be stuck mostly. It almost worked, but not entirely. And just for comparison purposes, if you're curious how this looks compared to the H Series Ambulance, we'll put them side by side and you can see the differences. So it appears the ambulance on the back is basically the same, but then the front just looks slightly different because one's got the H series, the other's got the D series. But they have a lot of cosmetic similarities considering they're both gravel vehicles. Anyways, gotta make sure I choose the right one and then we continue driving along. So you have another tunnel over there. We're not gonna go through that tunnel. I think you've seen enough of those tunnels because we have other kinds of tunnels we can drive through. This one is much shorter both in height and distance. In fact, it's shorter in height where I don't know if we're gonna fit. This is gonna be tight. Ooh, actually we have like a foot of clearance. We're fine. Although there are some bumps in here. Oh, we're good still. But I was not slowing down enough to make this. Oh, perfect. Did not even go up on the curb. Although I will go up on it right now just because it makes it easier to go around the corner. I don't have to back up because backing up is lame. As for performance, I think the H45 is better. I don't know, it just has more of an ambulance look. This one doesn't look as ambulancey as the H series. So over here we have a new construction site that we can drive around in. And to drive around a construction site, an ambulance doesn't really make that much sense. We need something that's good at driving on dirt roads. So we could just go all out and go with like the rock racer. But you know what? Let's not take the easy way out. 
we're going to go with the coolest looking one I see, which is the D15 423 Sport. And as I mentioned earlier, this is just the char we were driving earlier, but in truck form. Now, one thing that's worth noting is these are both rear wheel drive only, which means we should be able to do some really mean drifts in the dirt. That's the plan, at least. Let's see. Can we do it? Oh, that was good. Nice slide. I right, do the next corner, too. It's actually really easy to drift when you're going low speeds in the dirt. That's the nice thing. Like, I look like I can actually drift. In reality, this is super easy. But here's the cool part. We have a tube we can go into. Not exactly the smooth transition. And this is a great example of how they've changed the camera. So before, the camera was not aware of the environment around it. So it would just clip right through the tube if you try to do this. But now it stays inside of the tube. And you can see the vehicle at all times without seeing the outside of the tube accidentally. It's one of those weird things where you don't notice that it's actively doing that, but if it wasn't doing that, you would definitely notice the difference there. So how about we do a nice big jump? And I'm going to try to do something really dumb with this jump. I know if we're going fast enough, we can overshoot the water and land on land. So that's the goal. Land on land. Land on land. Can we make it? Yes, we can. As long as you see that chant, it will make it. Even if it's just barely, it will make it, but it will also break its drive shaft so it can no longer drive. On the other hand, we get to look at the damage. And one last thing about the D series is there's a brand new year available. So now we have the 1998 to 2003 version of the D series. And I think the best thing to do is compare this to an older version. And thankfully, the D15 V8 crew cab is available in both old and new. So this is the old one, this is the D-Series everybody's come to know and love, and this is the new and improved one. You can tell it's from the future because look at these headlights, and look at the waviness in the grill. It looks so much newer, and then the hood, and it matches up with the grill, beautiful. And then over on the side of the truck, you can see the mirrors and the door handles, much newer looking. And over on the rear, we have newer tail lights, and the tailgate is a newer shape. Whatever newer shape means, that's what it is. And then, if we go to the inside of the vehicle, you can see it's newer in there as well. So we'll start with the old one. This is the interior. Everybody's seen. Pretty boxy on the inside. Lots of squares all over the place. And again, if you go to the new truck, well, boxes be gone. We have a nice wavy interior that's much smoother. And it looks exactly like an upgrade of the old version. Most importantly, the late models seem to get a hefty engine upgrade of about 50 horsepower. But we need to move on because there's more than just D-Series in this update. And why don't we use this truck that I conveniently left at the start of the highway to take a look at some of the new drag versions. So for the 200BX we have a new drag version which makes about 541 horsepower plus some nitrous. So it's not as fast as some of the other drag cars in the game. But it's still the fastest 200BX we have seen thus far as it easily accelerates up to 150 miles per hour. And it is topped out. Now there is another new drag car that we're going to be taking a look at. This one is for the Covet. And apparently it only has 271 brake horsepower, but it feels a lot faster than that. It's a little slow off the line, but it is a front wheel drive car after all. But once it gets moving, it keeps moving. Already up to 150 miles per hour. And every shift is so violent. But you can see it tops out much faster than the 200BX. And if I had to guess, I think the Covet is faster. Oh, can we come to a stop? Can we come to a stop? Kind of, kind of, kind of. But you do see there are a couple of racing style parts on this thing, like we got that hood exit exhaust. And then also on the rear we got speed holes. And then more practically, we have a carbon fiber trunk, but speed holes. Those are the most important thing for any drag car. But I think that's going to do it for this video. There are still a handful of changes I didn't get to cover as always. So if you want the full list of changes, you can go check out the change log. Some of the biggest things that I didn't get to show in this video is the tire physics have changed. The rendering engine has been modified, there's a new updated version of photo mode, and a lot of small changes to the other cars in the game. Some things you would notice like new paint jobs and other things you probably wouldn't notice like simple fixes to make the deformation more realistic. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Until next time, this has been YBR, and remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by how many D-Series trucks are in the game. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.